guys, what's up? In this video, I am particularly excited to talk about some of the new updates that Figma has introduced with regards to variables. So now variables can be used in your typography, whether that's like font family, line height, letter spacing, and a bunch of those things. Very similarly, you can actually combine your typography variables with styles, and I'm gonna talk about how that particularly is very useful as well. Figma has also introduced support for gradients as in combination with variables, but it may not exactly be what you're thinking about. So we're going to be covering all of these things in this video. So let's get to the first one, which is obviously the, the most common one. And I'm actually going to do these things from scratch. So let's say you have a design or you have designs or you have a design system and you actually wanna go ahead and use these things or use these updates in all of those different scenarios. We're going to see how to actually go ahead and do them. So the first one is, let's say you have a design, you have it responsively designed something like this, and you wanna go ahead and actually change the font size on different variants using variables or different screen sizes using variables. So the first thing that you can do is you can open your variables and you can come here and you can create a number variable. So for example, I'm gonna say this is going to be my heading size or something along those lines, or H1 we can just say, or intro, h1 because an h1 in a blog can actually be different from an intro uh, an h1 in an intro section so this is 72 so i'm going to say so first of all i'm going to say this is going to be desktop so on desktop this particular size is going to be 72 on mobile it's going or on tablet it's going to be 60 so let's go ahead and replace that with tablet and i'm going to say this is 60 and in the end, I'm gonna add another mode. I'm gonna say this is going to be our mobile size. And on mobile, I think it's 40 or something along those lines. So let's say this is 40. So now that that's done, I can also just go ahead and actually expand this so you can see it. So we have that set. Now we can obviously set the line height as well. So I can say the line height, and this is very important to understand as well, apologies. I actually accidentally added another mode. This is really important as well. So when you're actually including, let's say a line height, you're, what you're doing is you are H1 line height, let's just say LH. A line height can, can't actually be in percentages when you're using a variable. So if I type 72, it's actually just going to be a number. So if I want to use percentages, I can't really use percentages with variables right now. And in my opinion, you shouldn't really use percentages with variables to begin with, because when you're using percentages, for the most part, those percentages stay consistent across the different screen sizes. So if you were to look at our design, as you can see, the percentage here is 110. It's 110% here as well. It's 110% here as well. If you do want to use these uh, line heights in fixed values, we can obviously go ahead and set them. We can say, okay, this one is going to be 80 maybe. This one is going to be, I don't know, 60 or 64 or 68. And then this one is going to be 48 or 44. I'm just trying to, again, get it closer to the 110 percentage that I have here. So I can go ahead and I can set that like this. And we can just copy the style now. We don't even have to. And let me just obviously go ahead and change this as well to our uh, H1. So I've done that. So I've copied this text and I'm just gonna go ahead and replace it here and replace it here. So now all of these are using the actual uh, style with the variables or actual text with the variables on both those places. And obviously you can have the text or uh, a variable here as well. You can have a variable here as well. Uh, here as well and in a lot of different places as well so you can actually go ahead and play around with that um, but i think like the most use they're gonna have are probably going to be here on these top three values so the font size the line height the letter spacing and if you want obviously the paragraph spacing but i don't think that's going to be likely so now you can just go ahead and change this to mobile you can change this tablet to tablet obviously and you just have one style that's being used and you can just directly update them. Now, the use of this is obviously that you can easily update that particular variable value and you don't have to change a style for it or change multiple styles for it or change multiple places uh, in which these styles are used. So now let's come and talk about styles. Now, before we go forward, I would like to let you know that I've recently introduced my premium Figma Noob to Pro course that's gonna help you take your design skills to the next level. It has topics covering from the basics to advanced topics like auto layout, prototyping, components, you name it. 
So if you really want to take your design skills and not only just design skill, but your earning skills and earning potential to the next level as well, definitely go check out the course link in the description. Additionally, I have a voucher code for you guys as well, especially my subscribers and viewers. If you use the AM subscriber voucher, you're going to get a 50% off on that as well. So imagine you have a bunch of styles like this, which is display to Excel, Excel, LG, MD, so on and so forth. So you basically, when you're creating a larger design system or you're creating a design system for a larger application, you usually have a bunch of text styles that you want to use. Now imagine, and all of these text styles usually use a sim, like the same font, like enter. So what usually happens is maybe a client comes in and they're like, hey, I want to update all of the enter font to Roboto. How would you go ahead and do that? Currently, there's no way to do that if you're using styles, which is particularly why variables are gonna be really beneficial here. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna say, create a variable here that's gonna be our, a string. And I'm gonna say, this is the default font. Default font, and the default font should just be, actually, since we don't really have desktop, tablet, and mobile variants for the default font, I don't think this necessarily makes sense in this collection. So I'm gonna rename this collection, and that's what you should do as well, is maybe to something like responsive sizes, and then I can go ahead and I can create a new collection, and I can say this is going to be my fonts, and in this particular one, I can just create a string and I can say this is my default font. I can have another font for let's say headings as well. So I can create another string that's like heading font. Uh, and then I can say, okay, so the default font is like enter and I can update that to enter here as well. So once you've done that, you can actually go to your styles individually and you can go here, you can click on this particular button and you can use the default font enter here and you can use it in multiple places obviously here as well. Now I haven't really found a way to actually go ahead and update all of these styles immediately. If I do find a way to actually swap the font to a particular variable using a plugin, I'll let you know. Hopefully again, a plugin is gonna come up real soon. This is a new feature, so probably a plugin like this doesn't exist right now, but it probably is gonna come out soon. So obviously once you go ahead and do that, I'm just gonna do that with these four values in the start. Now, if a client comes in and they're like, hey, I don't really like this font. Maybe we actually wanna use, give me some other font. I'm gonna detach it as well. Maybe we wanna use, I don't know, uh, let's try something really drastic, Jost or something along those lines, right? So maybe a client comes in, they're like, hey, I don't really want that, I want Jost. So you can just update that Jost here. And as you can see, the four values are updated now. So it's that simple. If you actually just wanna update them now in a combination with styles. So variables are gonna help you do that basically. So that's the other thing as to how you can actually combine variables with styles, which is really important. Now coming to gradients. In this particular iteration, you, as you can actually see, I have a linear gradient here that has that is using two colors. Now, if I wanna convert that to a variable, how do you go ahead and do that? Unfortunately, you cannot, and a lot of people are actually going to miss that when they probably heard about gradients or variable support with gradients, they thought, okay, I can now click the plus button and I can go to variable and I can create this particular thing and that's gonna be great. Unfortunately, no, that's not how it's gonna work. How it's gonna work is variables are still going to support only single values. So I'm gonna create a new collection here and I'm gonna say this collection is going to be my colors. So I'm gonna say my, let's say color is uh, top gradient color and then maybe a bottom gradient color, bottom gradient color. And what we can do now is we can go to this particular gradient and I'm gonna copy this color and I'm gonna paste it here and I'm gonna copy the other color and I'm gonna paste it here. So now what we can do is we can link these individual values to our color. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna say that I wanna use colors from my libraries, which is obviously gonna contain my styles and variables. And I'm gonna say, this is going to be my top gradient variable. And this one is going to be my bottom gradient variable. So now your gradients are going to use variables. And obviously you can create a style for this. I can say, okay, this style is going to be something like, I don't know, uh, my intro BG. So this is a style, my intro BG. And what I can do here is now is maybe go to my variables and I can say, okay, that's fine. This is, let's say variation one. In variation two, I actually wanna try something a bit more colored. 
So maybe what I can do is, and let me just go here and change that to variation two. Maybe here in this particular instance, I wanna go ahead and bring a bit of color into this. So maybe something like this. And very similarly for the second color or the bottom color, I wanna go a bit more bluish here. So I can do that and maybe actually, let me just go ahead and choose something like this. So now I can control these values directly with variables and obviously change them directly if I want to. So variation one, variation two. Um, I mean, a lot of people would be confused as to why we wanna go ahead and do that and link our variable var values to variables or sorry, our gradient values to variables. And there may be some instances where you may want to do that. For example, when you have a gradient variable that's used in different places in different ways. So as an example, if I was to just give an example like that, let me just go ahead and use my intro BG here, but I'm gonna use it slightly here as well and I'm gonna detach it and I'm gonna use it here as well. And this is obviously detached. Now in this instance, what I'm doing is maybe this particular gradient is used like this. In this particular one, let me just cut it. In this particular one, it's actually used as a, I don't know, radial gradient. It still has those two points, but it's used as a radial gradient. So now I can go ahead and I can tweak uh, these values to a different one using the mode. And I can say that, okay, this is my variation too. Now all of these different types of gradients are changing the colors, but they're respecting the different gradient properties that I've basically applied to them. So that is one use case where using a variable or variable stops or variable values within a gradient would be really helpful because then you wouldn't have to update the styles globally to change that or create multiple different styles for that. So yeah, that's one of the reasons why you may want to go ahead and do that. But again, like these are some impressive and awesome updates and I feel like again, Figma is going to keep on really pushing. So I am really excited to see how you actually start using these. And if there's any particular use case that you see I've missed, definitely put that out in the comments and I'll see you all in the next video. Take care. Bye.